<laughs> the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Car New, and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coats present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> several times before, a few of the special protective finishes that the makers of Johnson's Wax have developed and are making for implements of war. I don't believe I included one very important group of these finishes, paints, enamels, and lacquers. When you think of a ship or a tank, you normally think of heavy steel plates. When you think of a large shell, you think of a steel casing. But to get these implements into the war in proper condition and to fight the battle against rust and corrosion requires millions of gallons of protective paints, enamels, and lacquers. Johnson's paint finishes are helping to protect the surfaces of ships, tanks, shells, mortars, hand grenades, life rafts. The list is very long. The finishes are made to meet the rigid specifications of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Maritime Commission. When the war is over, these paints and enamels will be back doing peacetime protective service. In the meantime, any manufacturer having a finishing problem for any piece of war equipment is invited to write S.C. Johnson & Son, Racine, Wisconsin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present a man who is a born leader with his chin. A man who knows nothing of fear, who knows nothing of caution, who knows nothing, period. <laughs> but here on his way to learn something from a numerologist, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. This place right here, Molly. Must be up over this barbershop. Ratty looking place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it always amazes me, dearie, that all these people who set themselves up as prophets never look like they made any. <laughs> uh, well, why look into the future just to see yourself starving to death? That'd be silly. Come on, it's time for my appointment. Oh. Are you sure this man is a numerologist, McGee? Sure, why? Well, he ought to be an astrologer. Huh? Forty more steps and he'd be within ten feet of the moon. <laughs> now, I bet this is going to be a turning point in my life, Molly. Oh, dear, you've had so many turning points already, you'll go down in history as Furling Fibber McGee. <laughs> How do you do? I am Professor Cypher. Please to come in. Now, look, bud. My name is... Please do not annoy me with trifles which I already know. You know? Certainly. You are Fibber McGee and wish to consult me because your life is out of harmony with the numerical vibrations of the universe. Well, my gosh. You hear that, Molly? He knew who I was and why I came. Well, you made the appointment in your own name, didn't you? <laughs> then why should you come to see a numerologist? To get your tires recapped? <laughs> I'm not particularly bowled over, dearie. Perhaps when the lady sees the results of this interview, she will change her attitude toward the ancient science of the Egyptians. I bet you will at that, Prof. Uh, the only Egyptians I ever saw were mummies. If this undertaking is anywhere near as good as theirs, I'll buy it. Please, to sit down. Thank you. You may smoke if you wish, madame. Thank you, I don't smoke. The cheaper vices don't appeal to me, sir. <laughs> well, let's get at it, Prop, old doc. What have I got to do to vibrate eight to the bar? Mr. McGee, in every living person's life force, there is an immutable, unchangeable, unalterable pitch. A vibration? That's what I've been telling him, Professor. All he has to do is get in there and pitch. For each person, his fortune depends upon how closely he's attuned to his vibration. Uh -huh. If he is in harmony, good luck and health, wealth and happiness will flow about him. Uh -huh. I will advise you to change your name. Huh? Change my name? That's ridiculous. Why? He changed mine and what good came of it? <laughs> Change my name to what, Doc? Now, let me see. Where is my chart? Ah, yes. I would say perhaps five letters in the first name, one middle initial, and five letters in the surname. 
That would be 11. A prime number with no common divisor. But one. That's the stuff. We want no common ordinary divisors in our name, do we, dear? Well, uh, what name would you suggest, bud? Well, for the first name, how about Homer? A fine old name in the classic tradition. Homer, eh? Yeah. Homer. 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 Sounds like a pigeon. <laughs> Doesn't seem uh, quite right to call him Homer when he never gets to first base. <laughs> Yes, Homer will do splendidly for the first name. Now a middle initial. Say K. That's the eleventh letter of the alphabet. And how about Frink for the last name? Homer K. Frink. Blended. Homer K. Frink. Homer K. Frink. Hey, that ain't bad. Sounds kind of distinguished. Well, come on, Mrs. Frink. I don't guess... call me Mrs. Frink. <laughs> you can be Homer Frink if you want to, but don't include me, dear. Oh, well, you'll come to it when you see how successful I'm going to be. How much I owe you, Prop? Ten dollars, Mr. Frink. Ten bucks? He's been called a lot of ten-dollar names in his day, Professor, but none like Homer Frank. <laughs> Madam, this is probably the greatest investment he has ever made. A mere ten dollars to lay the foundation of a fortune. For believe me, when he goes out into the world as Homer Frank, with his vibration to tune to his rightful destiny, he'll regard the paltry sum of ten dollars as pitifully inadequate. Well, I'll bet I will at that. Well, here you are, Prof. Thank you. Hey, good day, Professor. Good day, madam. Ah, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Homer Frank. Homer K. Frank, in tune with the universe at last. Lady Lux, here I come. No more fumbling and stumbling. Look out, McGee, the stairs. McGee, are you hurt? No, no, no. Of course not. Thanks to Homer Frank. If I'd have still been Trevor McGee, I'd have busted my clavicle. (laughs) Oh, my God. Mrs. Homer K. Frink. No, I won't have it. What's the matter, Molly? What you muttering about? McGee, I don't want to be Mrs. Homer Frink. Well, that's a distinguished name. I know a big newspaper woman in Chicago named Frink, and she's one of the finest... I don't care. I'm satisfied just to be Mrs. Fibber McGee. And goodness knows why. You haven't given Homer Frink a chance yet. I guess the professor knew what he was doing when... Well, hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. How are you bound for? Well, hello, Mr. Oldtimer. And don't call me Johnny, you hear, Oldtimer? Call me Homer. Or Mr. Frink. Okay, Frank. Not Frank, Frank. It rhymes with... (laughs) Well, never mind what it rhymes with. What's the idea, Johnny? I mean Frank. I mean Frank. I got my name changed by a numerologist, old-timer. With my new name, Homer Frank, my numbers are all in harmony. He vibrates. (laughs) He does? Stand still a minute, Johnny, and let's see. See, he does it there. Quivers like an E-string. <laughs> <laughs> it's just excitement over having his numbers in harmony. Papa was in the numbers racket once, but he couldn't get into harmony with the police. <laughs> well, this is different. This is a scientific thing. I don't know about that, uh, Homer. I knew a fellow changed his name, the results was horrible. It was awful. Yeah. For a while, it looked like he'd do all right. Then his luck went bad. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get hung or shot any day now. Oh, my. What was his name before he changed it? Schickle Gruber. <laughs> well, I gotta be running along, 
kid. Got to buy my girl Bessie some nuts. She's trimming her hat. Trimming a hat? What does she want the nuts for? To put on the hat, daughter. Don't be ridiculous, old timer. What kind of nuts can you trim a hat with? Forget me. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, daughter. So long, homeless. <laughs> Muzzle loader not only don't know what it's all about, he don't even suspect. Come on, Molly. I want to see a couple of guys downtown on a business deal. Going to try my luck at Homer Frank. Oh, McGee, I wish you'd give up this foolishness. I always go along with you up to a point, but this one is too sharp for me. You just keep stringing along with me, baby, and you'll wear diamonds. You've been a good kid. And one of these days, you'll be proud to be Mrs. Homer Frank. How'd you like to own a big castle in Southern California? Oh, my. That'd be simply ducky, dearie. I can hardly wait to see the happy peasants trampling out the orange juice. <laughs> well, don't you be surprised if sometimes... Oh, look, McGee. Here comes Mrs. Uppington. Uh-oh. Get a load of that strut. You think she'd get tired of following herself around? Now, <laughs> behave yourself. Abigail's a fine woman. <laughs> oh, hello, Abigail, darling. How nice to see you. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Miss McGee? If you don't mind, Mrs. Uppington, please address me as Mr. Frank. Homer K. Frank. I beg your pardon? Yes, he's had his name changed by a numerologist, Abigail. Oh. He now vibrates in walk time, but I'm sitting this one out. <laughs> I done it for luck, Uppy. Homer K. Frank has got the right number of letters to make me harmonize with the universe. You see, everybody's personality has got what you might call a different wavelength. And the professor says... Oh, I see. Is yours a permanent or just a finger wave? <laughs> well, either way, it's enough to curl your hair. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Scoff if you want to. Be right. But one of these days, mark my word... Do you mean to say, Mr. McGee... Frank. Um, do you mean to say, Mr. Frank, that you believe this preposterous nonsense? Are you that superstitious? Oh, indeed he is. He never even lets anyone throw a hat on a bed. My cousin Stetson came to visit us from Peoria once and had to sleep standing up for a week. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Have your fun, girls. Have your fun. But any scientist in the world will tell you that every living thing is regulated by vibration, by the cosmic rhythm, by the waves. Oh, oh really, Mr. McGee? I must tell my sister to be sweet, please. Is she a scientist, Abigail? Oh, no, she's a wave. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, Mr. Plunk. <laughs> with upping the she won't admit anybody knows anything but her. She's narrow-minded. Well, give her credit, dearie. It's the only place she is narrow. <laughs> Look at her walking down the street there. Yeah. If she was taller and better looking, she'd be high, white, and handsome. <laughs> well, let's go, Molly. I want to get these guys. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello there, Molly. How are you, Fibber? I'm fine, Junior, but I'm not Fibber. Well, that's... Huh? I says I'm fine, but I'm not Fibber McGee. Like you evidently mistakenly think I am, evidently. Yes. <laughs> You have the dubious pleasure of speaking to Mr. Homer Frank, Mr. Wilcox. No relation to Benjamin Franklin or Franklin D. Roosevelt. I don't get it. Well, you see, Junior... No, no, uh, please. Let Molly explain it. I'm confused enough. You were born confused, son. Well, Mr. Wilcox, he went to a numerologist and got his name changed. He is now in tune with the universe, which isn't so hard right now because the universe is slightly off key. I vibrate to the right numbers now, Junior. I got rhythm. Well, for anybody with as big a brass section as you've got, pal, it's a good thing. <laughs> but I'm glad everybody doesn't believe in that stuff. Why, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, Molly. You shouldn't have had off ever asked him that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like asking the insurance salesman what he's got in that briefcase. <laughs> well, what I mean is, wouldn't it be silly of us to change the name of, say, Johnson's car on you, for instance, yes. when it's so well-known and liked everywhere as the automobile polish that cleans and polishes in one easy application? See what I mean? Why, when a name means as much to car owners as Johnson's car knew does, why, you'd as soon break a leg as change it. Mm -hmm. You almost broke an arm reaching for that one, Junior. <laughs> but he's right, dearie. Certainly I'm right. Why, if we changed the name of car new, how could motorists know what to ask for when they wanted a product that was so thoroughly time-tested and customer-endorsed? A polish that's so simple and easy to use that a child could do it, that you simply apply, let dry, and wipe off with a soft cloth to get practically a showroom finish on your car. No, sir, we won't change the name of Johnson's car in you. Well, look, Johnson, uh, Junior, I wasn't suggesting it. <laughs> no use, Fibber. <laughs> <laughs> it's no use. The Johnson people would never hear of it, and I don't blame them. Doggone it, Johnson, I says I was... No. <laughs> no, a 
a thousand times no. Car knew it is, and car knew it's safe. And Racine is going to be pretty sore when I tell him you wanted to change it, too. Of all the ridiculous, stupid, fantastic ideas to change the name of car knew, why is that silly? Your cosmic rhythm seems to have missed a couple of beats, dearie. Shucks. If Mr. Wilcox tells the scene you want to change the name of Carnu, your luck is really due for a change. And I don't mean good. Doggone it, I didn't want to change any names. That guy's got seven silver cups. He's one jumping to conclusions. I didn't mean to... McGee, was... look! Huh? Where? Right ahead of us, there's huh? a man lying on the sidewalk. Oh. Maybe he's ill. Oh, looks kind of familiar, too. Oh. Hey, that's Wimple. Yeah, that's Wimple. Did I hear someone call my... Oh, hello, folks. <laughs> Wimp. What's the idea, laying on the sidewalk? Just as you think, Mr. McGee. Oh. <laughs> I thought I saw Seedy Face coming down the street. Yes, but how would lying flat on the sidewalk help in that case? Well, she told me she was going to slap me wall-eyed as sure as I was a foot high. <laughs> well, you're safe, Wimp. She ain't anywhere around here. Thank you, Mr. McGee. And the name is Frank, Wimp. Homer K. Frank. Oh, how do you do? Have we met some place? <laughs> Well, Mr. McGee has changed his name, Mr. Wimple. A numerologist told him to for luck. Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, I've got to hurry and meet Sweetie Face. She'll be horribly angry if I'm late. What's the rush, Wimp? Well, I'm meeting Sweetie Face at the Marines' pistol range. Oh. She's going to show them how she shoots a cigarette out of my mouth with a forty-four pistol. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that dangerous, Mr. Wimple? Oh, no, silly girl. <laughs> I never inhale. <laughs> to walk in the streets. Let's go home. No, well, okay. I'll start out early tomorrow and test out my new name. Let's cross over here. No, no, McGee. The red light is on. We have to wait for the green. Oh, come on. We're not yokels. There's hardly any traffic. Here, take my arm. All right. And the first truck to come along, we'll take the other. Hey, hey, hey. Where do you think you're going? What's the idea of jaywalking? Don't you know it's against the law to cross on the red light? Yeah, but sure. But gee whiz, officer. Stop right. arguing. What's your name? My name is Molly McGee. It's... McGee, huh? Yes. And a fine old name it is, too, McCushler. Yes, indeed. And uh, what's your name? Who, me? Oh, I'm Homer Frank. Homer K. Frank. Well, never let me catch either one of you. What did you say your name was? He said it was Frank. Homer K. Frank. You don't say. Now, don't go away for a minute. Hey, Hennessy. Yeah? Call the wagon. I've got Homer Frank. Wait, wait. Frank! Take him away in the wagon for crossing against the line? I should say not. I That's just... the least of the things this bird is wanted for, lady. Huh? Homer K. Frank. Wanted in seven states for arson, murder, bank robbery, forgery, women, parole violation, and bigamy. Keep your hands up there, Frank. <laughs> now look here, officer. Shut up, you, or I'll take me stick to you. Oh. All right, make room there, all of you. This man is dangerous. He is not. I am, too. I mean, I will be if this big baboon don't stop acting silly. Now you look here, officer. Right. If uh, I... Here comes the wagon. Here. No false moves now, Frank. Now look, I'm not... I didn't... I didn't... Hey, Molly! Molly! Yeah. Get a lawyer! Don't worry, dearie. I'll straighten it all out. I'll see you later. Don't leave me. The king's men saying I got plenty of nothing. Oh, I got plenty of nothing. And nothing's plenty for me. I got no car, got no mule, got no misery. Oh, 
ninth time I'm telling you I'm not Homer Frank. Yeah, we know, we know. And get that spotlight out of my eye. Ah, uh, leave me talk to him a minute, Chiefy. Clancy, put down that rubber hose. <laughs> yeah, put that down. You know them things is right, Clancy. You guys are going to be sorry for this. When I get hold of the mayor, I'll... Ah, uh, stood up, Homer. Now, uh, <clears throat> what were you saying about that stick-up in Boston, Homer? I didn't say nothing about a stick-up in you. Maybe just... you'd like to tell us about that jewelry deal in Florida, or that Chicago job he pulled. That bad it, I tell you, I never... Ah, uh, what's the use? All right, you guys. You want to hear about my Chicago job, do you? Well, I'll tell you about it. Now, now you're talking sense, Homer. Write this down, Clancy. Okay, Chief. All right. So it was in the fur warehouse, see? I come in late at night, see? Must have been around midnight. Half a million bucks worth of furs in there, not a soul around. See? How'd you get in? How'd you get in? Through a skylight? Skylight, he says. <laughs> what do you think I am crawling through skylights? I come in the front door. Oh, had a key made, huh? Sure, Chief. Homer's no punk. He knows your stuff. Now, let's see. Entered front door. First thing I done was lock the door behind me, see? Then I took a good look around with me flashlight, see? Make sure there was nobody hiding no place, see? Don't talk so fast, see? <laughs> Look around. Nobody hiding. I got it. All right. So the next thing I do, I ease over to the storage vault. It's locked. But that don't stop me, see? It don't? Nah. I got the combination all rolled down. I hauls it out of my pocket, opens up the vault, and strolls casually inside. What a nerve. Ah, oh, it was nothing. I fixed me out a bale of tables over in the corner. One bale of tables and a safe corner. Drags a flock of ermine rats over next to it. Pile of ermine. Curls up on it and takes me a nice long snooze. You what? You lay down on all those furs and went to sleep? <clears throat> sure. I had to sleep sometime. I was the only night watchman they had. You... <laughs> my job in Chicago. <laughs> ah, for the... <laughs> Frank, I, I got a good notion to poke you right in the cell and throw away the key. Oh, yeah, well, I know my rights, and you can't hold me here incognito like this. You don't mean incognito, Homer. You mean incommunicado. <laughs> I never know such a thing, neither. Incommunicado is a fruit that grows in California. <laughs> Them's avocados. <laughs> I thought an avocado was a kind of a run on the piano. Yep. That's, that's obligato. <laughs> Len Dobbs on it, what's incognito? Incognito is when you use a different name. A different name? I could think of a different name for you guys like you every two seconds for the next 400 years. Then believe me. Right in here, Doctor. And McGee, dearie, are you all right? Oh, sure, I'm fine. Nothing wrong with me, but that, that a short walk out the front door of this joint won't cure. Yeah. Well, I brought Dr. Gamble to identify you, dearie. Oh. We'll have you out here in no time. Yeah. Hello, Chief. Hello, McGee. Say, you got a mighty high color there, my boy. Been yelling your head off again, have you? Of course I've been yelling. These flat heads are... <laughs> you know this guy, Doc? Yes, I'm afraid I do, Chief. McGee, I've told you repeatedly about watching your blood pressure, about losing your temper. If you blow up someday like a nickel balloon and pop, don't say I didn't warn you. How much are you going to charge me for that? I didn't ask you to come down here, and if you think you're going to send me a bill for medical advice... Oh, McGee. Oh, I don't pay any attention to him, Mrs. McGee. I've warned him so many times about his blood pressure. Yeah, at three bucks a warrant. <laughs> well, if you can possibly identify this bird as McGee, Doc, we'll, we'll have to turn him loose. And about time, too. I'm going to sue every one of your cops for false arrest and malpractice. Mm. There's going to be so many stars flying around here, it'll look like a planetarium. I was oh, be oh, quiet, McGee, quiet. Well... How are you going to identify him, Doctor? Well, if he has a birthmark or something. He wasn't asking you. You bull neck cow face stirrup. McGee! Thing. I can identify him all right. Take off your shirt, McGee. <laughs> Doggone it, Doc. I hope I never meet you at 14th and Oak Street. <laughs> I never seen you yet. I didn't have to take off something. What for this time? Appendicitis scar. I operated on you, remember? Mm. That won't prove anything, Doc. Too many people got appendicitis scar. Not like mine! <laughs> gave me a scar that if I ever have my face lifted, it'll show over my collar. <laughs> there, you see? Okay. If you guarantee this guy isn't Homer Frank, Doc, you can go. I guarantee it. Come on, McGee. Mind if I put my shirt back on first? That's <laughs> just a suggestion, of course. <laughs> I don't know why they ever made such a ridiculous mistake in the first place. He said he was Homer Frank, lady. Look at this circular. Homer Frank is wanted for everything but the shooting of Dan McGrew. Uh, how'd you happen to pick that name? He didn't. The numerologist gave it to him. Professor Cipher. Professor Cipher? Yeah, why? 
He's my brother-in-law. Huh? I gave him one of these print circulars yesterday. Why, you of all the dirty... You mean he deliberately... Fr- <laughs> McGee, where are you going? I'm going to go back and see that professor. Print up another circular, Chief. Fibber McGee wants the... No! Fibber McGee wants the... No! Fibber McGee wants the... No! Fibber McGee good quality linoleum last? I suppose that's a hard question to answer because for one reason it depends upon how much wear it gets. But it depends upon something else even more, the care that's taken of it. If you protect it regularly with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, it will actually last six to ten times longer than if it were unprotected. The tough film of glow coat acts as a shield guarding the linoleum itself from wear. That same film of Johnson's glow coat gives the linoleum great beauty, keeps the colors looking like new. And, of course, glow coat is self-polishing. It needs no rubbing or buffing, so it takes practically no work. There are still some women who clean their linoleum by the old-fashioned scrubbing method, which is really harmful. Now, if you're one of these, you'll find Johnson's glow coat easier, more economical, and a great help in these days when we all need to make our things wear longer. so worried when you ran out of that police station. Yeah. I thought you were really going to get that, Professor Cypher. Yeah, I would have, too. But it took me 40 minutes to cross 14th Street, and by that time, I cooled off. Why couldn't you cross? Oh, I was seeing red and couldn't tell when the light changed. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> The parts of Wallace Wimple and the old timer were played by Bill Thompson. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson White Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you all to join us again next Tuesday night. Tonight, this program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>